Okay, you guys, I have some air pistols here, and what I wanted to do with you is uh, give you an idea of some velocities and energies of some of these air pistols by using a very common pellet that a lot of you guys get down at Walmart. Uh, it's not my top choice pellet, but they are available. And to give you an idea of these velocities, I'm just using the 7.4 grain pointed Crossman pellet. And for the 22s that I have here, same thing, Crossman pointed, and you can see that, uh, you can see the difference here. Now the 22 one is just a little bit taller, but they're pretty much the same shape. The weight is different. Um, the 177 at 7.4 grain, and the 22 is 14.3, somewhere around there. So what I'm going to do is go down the list here, and I also use some um, light pellets, these RWS Hypermax, these are 5.2 grain, to give you an idea of what uh, some of the high speeds are using lighter pellets. So I use these. These are kind of expensive. These are like 10 cents a piece, actually. But I had a few of them on hand. So um, they're expensive, but they work well in some target pistols that I have. Real accurate. So whereas other pistols are not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the list of these pistols, show you what they are, what the velocities are. And for energy, I'm just using the lead pellet for the energy mostly. So uh, right here on this list right here, right in the center, I'm going to be using I'm going to be using this part right here to show you guys the energy. So anyway, let's start off with the DX17 Umarex. That's 180 feet per second. Or let me see. I'll put the pellet here so you guys can see. There we go. I don't know if you can see that or not. And here's a lighter one here. Okay, so uh, let me grab the DX17 here. This is a $20 pistol. I'm just going to be real quick with this video. You can talk to me later about each of these. So this one's $19.99 or somewhere around there. $20, bucks, sometimes even cheaper. So I'm holding the camera, so it's hard for me to maneuver some of these pistols sometimes. But there it is there. That's 180 feet per second for the Crossman Pointed. And uh, we got point... Five three foot pounds of energy, and uh, the next one is the Browning Buck Mark, three hundred feet per second, one point four eight foot pounds of energy. So I'll get the Buck Mark right here, Browning Buck Mark, and then also if you guys see this side, this is the velocity for the five point two grain. So the next one is the 717, 747. Now this pistol is, uh, I have both. So 717 and 747. So this one here is 395 feet per second, 2.56 foot pounds. So let me get that one for you here. There it is right there. Okay. And then the next one is the P17, 380 feet per second, 2.37 foot-pounds. Beeman P17, right here. And the next is uh, P1, and the P1 has dual power. So on low power, it was 460 feet per second at 3.48 foot-pounds of energy. At high, it was 567 feet per second at 5.28 foot-pounds of energy. And then as you can see, the velocities here too for the lighter pellet. So I'm gonna show you the P1. It's an over-lever uh, spring piston air gun. It's got some good power. And dual uh, power. Depending on how you cock it, if you cock it halfway, you get low power. If you cock it all the way, you get full power. So low power to high power. You can choose your velocity on that one, which is kind of nice. Um, and it's also one of the best pellet pistols that I've ever had. 
Um, the 1377, you guys know what that is, the classic, 512 feet per second, uh, 4.31 foot-pounds of energy. Now, sometimes this shoots a little higher. This is an older Crossman that I've used quite a bit. Um, so with Crossman 1377s, the energies are going to fluctuate depending, and you have to make sure you oil the pad and stuff like that too. But you guys all know what the Crossman 1377 is. So here it is here. Okay. And I've got the just the shoulder, shoulder stock on it. It's just, it's pretty much bone stock. Nothing's been modified or anything. Um, okay, and we've already seen the, the P1. The Browning 800 mag, 640 feet per second for a 7.4 grain pellet. 6.73 foot-pounds of energy. Browning 800 mag. And I also have that in 2.2, which is right here. This is 177. So that incredible high velocity is coming out of this Browning. Shooting similar to the Daisy 880. Pump 10 times for velocities. Similar. So very high velocity. Okay. So now that I got that, um, the Ruger is the last one. The Ruger Mark I, I haven't shot that too much, but I was getting 440 for a 7.4 grain pellet at 3.18 foot-pounds of energy. So let's go get the Ruger Mark I. Here it is here. There's the Ruger Mark I. And this one I haven't shot a whole lot. It's got a really hard trigger, but what I found out with triggers is they get better as you shoot them. So um, this one here, it's I took a sample of 440. That might be higher later. It just depends. Um, but that's what it is for now. Okay, so uh, some interesting stats I wanted to tell you guys. If you don't have a crony, and let's say you're shooting at longer ranges, a pine board, in order for the 7.4 grain, Crossman pointed to stick flush, you need 400 feet per second at 2.63 foot-pounds of energy. So if you see here, meaning the pellet sticking flush in the pine board, you need that kind of speed and energy for that pellet. Um, a pop can, for a pointed pellet, you need about one foot-pound of energy to get through that. Um, and then let's look at the 22 caliber here. I got a Typhoon. This is 22 caliber. Once again, we're using we're using the pointed pellet here. And then for the lightweight pellet, I'm using the 9.57 field target alloy pellet. This is the H and N, but Beeman made them too. 9.57. There they are, and the Crossman pointed. So the Typhoon, 358 feet per second, uh, 4.7 foot-pounds. And over here you can see that it almost makes 5 foot-pounds with that uh, 9.57 right here. So I'll show you the Typhoon. That's one of my favorite, uh, probably is my favorite spring piston pistol ever. Because nothing gets loose on this thing. The bolts and the screws and everything just stay on it real nice. Never need to tighten anything, and it locks up real nice right here. As a matter of fact, they call it power lock. And they're sure right about that, this Webley Typhoon. When you cock this thing, uh, when the barrel comes back, there's literally no play in there. It's very accurate. But when you first buy it, the trigger's a little hard uh, to manage. But shooting it over time, as all triggers are, um, it gets better to shoot. So that's one thing you guys have to know about triggers is you have to keep shooting the air gun to get the trigger better. You know, don't be going in there and filing and stuff like that. Um, so we got the Typhoon, and then we got the Browning 800 meg and 22 caliber, 430 feet per second for the Crossman pointed, 14.3 grain, 5.87 foot-pounds of energy, and then 580 uh, for the 9.57 at 7. 0.15 foot-pounds of energy, so you can see it's making a little more energy with that, and that's typical with spring piston uh, pistols, is if you get too heavy, 
uh, the energy goes down, whereas the Crossman 1322 or the 1377 like this, as you load, as you load heavy pellets, sometimes you'll see uh, the energy climb. So, for instance, a 1322 model in this actually is more powerful than the Browning 800 mag because of the simple fact that you can load heavier pellets in this, but you can't in the Browning. Uh, once you start loading uh, anything over 15 grains or heavier, you start having a really dramatic drop in uh, foot-pounds of energy. Because spring piston uh, pistols, can they can shoot, sometimes they can shoot heavy pellets, but you don't want to go too heavy for spring piston pistols. So let me show you that one. So we've got the 177 Browning here, and the 22 one has got the Browning logo on it, right here. <clears throat> you can see right there. Yeah, so spring piston pistols like lighter pellets. They do very well with lighter pellets, whereas pumpers prefer the heavy pellets. Um, the Beeman P1 can handle the 10 grains, for instance, um, because the way it's uh, the spring piston in there is designed, it can handle some heavy pellets, but but uh, anything beyond like 11 grain or something like that, it's going to get too heavy for the P1. So uh, spring piston pistols are like that, whereas the pump up ones like this, you can, you can pretty much have uh, some of the heaviest pellets they've got run through this. Um, I shoot the 15 grain in this all the time. Uh, the 21 grain pile driver. I haven't shot too many of them through this, but I might sacrifice this one and shoot up a whole bunch of 21 grain, see how it works. Um, but uh, yeah, the energy goes up with this as you shoot heavier pellets. Um, but another thing to remember is energy at muzzle isn't always energy at 25 yards at 50 yards because heavier pellets generally have a better ballistic coefficient not all the time but so if you take something like this um, if you take something like this for instance this alloy pellet here the ballistic coefficient might be a little less than this so over time what happens is this four foot pounds of energy and this 4.76 foot pounds of energy. Now this seems higher, and it is, but at 25, 30 yards, this one might have more energy because of its weight and its shape. It just depends. They have made improvement on alloy pellets, making the ballistic coefficient much better. So this one might be running 0 0.020 ballistic coefficient, but that's something that has to be tested out in the yard at 25 yards with the pistol that you're using. Same thing with this. I don't know if it's higher or lower. It could be equal. But uh, ballistic coefficient has a play in distance energy. So just because your energy is higher on one pellet at the start, it doesn't mean that it's going to be higher at longer ranges. That's, that's kind of a myth with energy foot-pounds these days. For instance, right here, same thing. You got seven foot pounds, five foot pounds at 50 yards. Uh, this one, you know, is probably going to hit a little harder. So you have to remember that. So it's ballistic coefficient too. But this is just simply to give you an idea of velocities and energies of uh, certain pellets with uh, these pistols. But mainly, I wanted to focus on something that everybody knows about, which was the Crossman pointed because. These are available everywhere. So now you have an idea, if you go buy a pistol like I've showed you, now you'll have an idea of what kind of velocity you're getting if you buy like a Browning Buckmark or one of these or let's see what else. Uh, the P17, that's around. So that way you'll know what, what its performance is like. So, but anyway, once again, you got the pine board. Um, when the Crossman 7.4 is flush in a pine board, it's generally going 400 feet per second, 2.63 foot-pounds. So what I mean by that is if you're shooting long range and you don't have a chronometer, just set up a pine board 
And the moment that that uh, pellet is flush, whatever distance, it's 400 feet per second. So that way you can tell, you know, what kind of velocity loss you have uh, in your air rifle when you're shooting at longer distances. And then obviously a pop can. If it won't go through a pop can, it doesn't have one foot pound of energy. So, so if it's going to go through a pop can, if you're plinking pop cans, you need one foot pound to go through. So the moment or the distance that you can't get through a pop can, you know that your energy has pretty much failed you. So... But anyway, thanks a lot for watching the video. Um, uh, some of these I have had for over 20 years, some even longer. So, but anyway, uh, these all function very well, and uh, I do shoot them. Some I don't shoot a lot. Some I shoot like crazy. But uh, this 1377, I shoot this quite a bit. These target pistols here, I've got I've got two of these, the 717 and the 747. Mostly I shoot this in the spring outside at 40 yards doing shots with that and I also have videos on that one too. Not so much the Ruger Mark 1. I. I haven't really had that outside a whole lot. Pretty much just in here. So, but anyway I wanted to give you an idea of uh, uh, some air pistols here, velocities and stuff like that. I didn't choose the CO2 ones because CO2 pistols are kind of weak. Except for the Crossman, uh, the Crossman CO2 pistol and uh, the 177 that uh, you know that uh, that are more powerful, you know that's an exception to the rule. But I'm talking about CO2 pistols that have like ring magazines and stuff like that. They're only shooting about 350 or under, so I didn't include them. Um, I just included uh, these pretty much instead of the CO2 ones. So that way, that way it gives you an idea of what you're getting if you buy a pistol like these that are self-powered, that you don't need CO2s for them. You can get an idea of what kind of velocities it's going to be doing. Whereas the CO2, you have to uh, run it through the crony, you know, 10 or 20 times and then find some kind of average uh, velocity or whatever. So it takes a while to give you accurate information on a CO2 pistol. So, but anyway... Um, yeah, thanks for watching, you guys.